Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joseph and welcome to the most dramatic Bachelor episode recap yet. I'm talking about episode two of The Bachelor that was on just last night. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Demi. I'm gonna talk about the first group date, the one-on-one -on -one date, the second group date, the cocktail party, and as always, the rose ceremony. We saw another rose ceremony tonight. Four girls went home. Stick around to the end to figure out who went home. So let's start with Demi. Now, shame on me as the so-called self-proclaimed bachelor expert. I totally forgot to mention in my video last week that, you know, I talked about Catherine. She interrupted girls four times, but really, Catherine is just kind of immature. She's just kind of an airhead. But Demi, she is diabolical. She's absolutely evil. She is the villain, the number one villain above all all everyone else, it's not even close. She is the most diabolical one in this entire cast. And Demi, she was a little Hellraiser again in this episode. I'm gonna be saying her name the entire video, so stick around and stick through this to find out all what Demi did. Or if you watched, to relive what Demi did on last night's episode. So, first date card, eight girls, Demi, Bree, Tracy, Elise, Hannah G, Nicole, Catherine, and on Yeka, they were in a theater, and who else did they see when they walked in the theater but Ron freaking Swanson and that evil, conniving librarian, Tammy. That's right, his wife, Tammy, who, from the show, that's her character's name, but they're married in real life, they were there, they were doing some comedy um, little sketches, so the, the activity what these girls had to do was they were talking about first and they were working through some stuff on the stage, and later that night, about 200 people rolled in, and they did their entire presentation. All the girls went up there, kind of open mic, talking about first in front of 200 people, this packed little theater, so that was fun to see. And Elise was up there talking about, you know, some of the older girls, they have their little cougar's den, they all room together inside of the mansion, and, you know, she's older, she's 31, and after she does her bit, there was a little side interview with Demi, and this just shows her evilness. She was like, wow, I just love how brave Elise is up there telling everyone how old she is. I just love this stuff. Girls are so petty, and I just, you know, it's like when, when girls are like, oh, I just love how she wears anything. And this brought me back to Mean Girls. I thought I was watching Regina George and all these other girls. It, it took me back to Mean Girls is really what Demi has been for me so far. Then Catherine gets up there. Anyeka said something about swimming in bitches or something like that. And Catherine was just like, I'm a good swimmer, threw down the mic and, you know, threw up her hands, gave one of these gesture to the crowd or whatever. That was kind of funny. And then you have Demi. She gets up there. She's telling this, you know, broad story, not using any names. She's like, I met this guy. I'm usually bold enough to make a move. And she's like, I'm just tired of waiting. Throws the mic out of her way, walks right off the stage, right to Colton, sitting down center in front and kisses him in front of everyone. And I love how the other girls were talking. Like I was looking at his face to seeing if he was enjoying it. Like obviously the other girls couldn't stand this. They can't stand Demi. That's just one of Demi's episodes and, and little theatrics that she put on in last night's episode. Walks up, kisses him. She's like, and that's how I'm gonna get the first group date rose. She is just very, very confident in herself, especially in her abilities above all the other girls. So now post theater, they have a little mixer, these eight and Colton. Demi wastes no time as soon as they sit down. She's like, do you wanna go talk? So they go, they get some one-on-one -on -one time. She comes back, picks up the rose. She goes, oh, this is my rose in front of all the other girls. I don't really, I mean, she is just so evil and she even started laughing. She had this evil laugh. I'm pretty sure Christopher Nolan is gonna reboot the whole Batman Dark Knight thing and she's gonna be cast as the Joker. Like I thought like she is the Joker without makeup. That laugh, just the way that she acts and carries herself. She is the Joker. And then we didn't see much of Hannah G. Remember Hannah G and Colton, they, she got the first impression rose last week. They have a really good connection. Colton once again uh, saying that she reminds him of home. They just have this really good foundation. Really right now, this is how it's looking for me. Hannah G, everybody else. He's had good connections with other girls, but Hannah G, there seems to be an authenticity, a, a sense of comfortability and familiarity. Hannah G and Colton, they have something really, really good right now. She's my favorite once again through week two. I'm going to keep riding the Hannah G bandwagon until 
she does something or something happens to prove me otherwise. And at the end of this, the rose goes to Elise. So remember Elise? She was the older one. She's 31. So sorry, Demi, you pussycat. This rose belongs to a cougar, and it belongs to Elise. Was really glad to see Elise gets this. There's a good rivalry forming right now between Demi and Elise. I really, really like this. Now, we have the one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one -on -one card, it went to Hannah B, aka Miss Alabama. And so it was her birthday. It was really cool that she got this. It seemed to be a coincidence. They're in a Jeep, they ride into the desert. There's a hot tub there. They do some horseback riding. This is a pretty cool date. This would be a chill date that I wouldn't mind going on. This was pretty cool. I enjoyed this. And before I get to what the, whatever happened on this date, they, they shoot back to the mansion and Kaylin, and remember Kaylin who was Miss North, Miss North Carolina, her and Hannah B competed at the Miss USA pageant. So they have a rivalry and Kaylin and Hannah, she revealed that they were roommates at this pageant at the Miss USA and that when you know, Kaylin finished ahead of her and Hannah B didn't win. She was really jealous. She cracked. So there is a side of Hannah that's out there that we haven't seen yet. So Kaylin was telling some other girls, one other girl at least, about this, how she just cracked and absolutely just snapped was the word that Kaylin used. So now we're going back to the date. They're in the desert and in the hot tub. Colton's trying to toast and he makes a toast and she's trying to make a toast. It's just awkward. She's not opening it up. It's not going anywhere. I mean, this was really, really painful to watch at times. Luckily, she still had the dinner and she goes, so I want to know, why are you a virgin? And I don't like this. And Colton gave, you know, he's handling this really, really well. I have to commend Colton for this. He gives the answer that he's given a thousand times. And even though that I hate this because this is out there, it's been documented, she knows this. I think it's just a cop-out answer because she's not that inter interesting. She can't come up with her own question. But it worked out in her favor because it ended up opening an avenue for, hit, for her to open up, share some similar experiences that she's had in her past with Colton, and she ends up getting the rose. So this cop-out, Totally lame answer, really saved her at the end. So she gets a rose. Second date card, we have 12 girls. Alex, Erica, Katie, Kaylin, Cindy, Tasha, Nina, Kerpa, Caitlin, Courtney, Cassie, Heather. Gosh, I feel like Ted, go, or uh, yeah, t uh, Johnny and Ted going through all the white trash names. If you've seen that movie, you get the reference. So they go to a summer camp. Camp Bachelor, ha ha, hardy har har, boom cha. And then so Billy Eichner is there. He's a comedian actor. You'll know him from Parks and Rec in the later season. And he was the realtor uh, in Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising. So if you saw him, you definitely recognize this guy. He's super funny. He was there at Camp Bachelor. After all of that, there's two teams. One team, the losing team went home, so red team stayed, yellow team lost, they had to go back to the mansion. Red team got to stay overnight in the cabins. And Heather, remember, never been kissed, Heather, got some one-on-one -on -one time with Colton. She opened up about it, she just went for it. I thought this was good, but then the moment was there. They were playing the dramatic music. There was the gazing back and forth. Colton wasn't sure if he wanted to make a move. This was on Heather to make this move. Colton wanted to kiss her, but he didn't want to be overbearing. He didn't want to be over aggressive with her. He wanted her to make the move. And usually I'm not about that, but in this situation, it was the right move, let me tell you. And she blew it. She totally blew it. She didn't go for it. And I thought she was done. But at the end of the night, the rose went to her. That really, really surprised me. I thought she blew her chance when she didn't make the move and kiss Colton. Let's talk about the cocktail party now. This is what happened right before the rose ceremony. There's 20 women looking for roses. Colton's talking to Sydney, and this girl with it starts blowing an air horn and knocking on the door and barges in and interrupts. I'm like, where do they get these props? Where do they get the ideas to do this stuff? I feel like it's just Chris Harrison being like, do we have an air horn? Why don't we try this? It's like, I feel like it's what it'd be like to be on a Judd Apatow movie set where they do a scene, he stops it and he yells out, hey, try this line or try this, giving them direction. I feel like it's just Chris Harrison is just a puppeteer, just navigating and directing all of these shenanigans that go on and all these types of interruptions because they get creative, they're cheesy, they're weird, but 
It's like death, taxes, and getting interrupted during a cocktail party. It's like on The Bachelor. It's just something that happens every single week. So that happened. Then Sydney went and found herself a pan and a spoon and started knocking on that. And she's like, oh, I can make noise too. She comes back out and she's like, oh, well, can you give us a minute? And she's like, no, I'm going to sit right here. Good for Sydney standing her ground. I can kind of respect this. Usually I don't like it, but it's funny. It's good television. In this instance, I think it was a good move. And then Demi comes out in a robe and she pulls up Colton. She goes, do you want to come to my fantasy closet? And one of the girls dropped one of the best one-liners I've ever heard in the Bachelor or Bachelorette and Paradise history. As she's, as she's walking him up the stairs, she goes, someone goes, does she even have parents? This was great. It was so funny. It was so in the moment. One of the best one-liners I've ever heard on The Bachelor. It was just absolutely in Incredible. And then they were building this up. It sounded like that Demi was going to drop the robe and she was going to show what she had going on underneath. But it was really just this massage thing that she had set up. She was giving Colton a harmless little back rub. So that was pretty lame. That was pretty lame. They built it up and they tore us down for something pretty lame. Rose ceremony. It was pretty straightforward. Remember Heather, Elise, and Hannah B. They're all safe. They had roses from their dates. Um, Annie, Alex, Angelique, and Erica went home. Demi, when she got her rose, she said, I am thrilled to receive this rose. So Demi just keeps poking, sticking the fire. I mean, she, she's not poking, she's stabbing. She's going right for it. She's going for everyone. So that was episode week two of The Bachelor. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, all linked down below. Talk soon.